All right, if you're watching this video, I assume that you have one of these ice pods or something similar and you're wondering how to keep it cold. Because when you bought it, you thought that you were getting a really good deal at around $150. But now that you have to put in ice all the time, you realize how expensive it really is. So now that you've decided that you no longer want to use ice, you've probably looked into the option of getting a water chiller. And then you saw how much those were. Priced anywhere from $1,000 to over $3,000. Water chillers are pretty darn expensive. So in this short and concise DIY video, I'm gonna show you how you at home can make a DIY water chiller for your ice pod or anything similar for around $500. And it's gonna be almost identical to the ones that they're selling online for well over $1,000. And it's actually gonna function a lot better. All right guys, so this is your typical ice pod right here. There's a lot of different variations of this particular pod out there and they're all about the same and they all share the same exact problem, is the fact that they have pretty much subpar insulation. It doesn't keep things cold very long. And so you add a whole bunch of water, after that a whole bunch of ice, and once you do that, the ice is gone within a matter of minutes, and it's hardly even chilled your ice pod. And with how expensive everything is, and bags of ice even being four to five dollars a piece, that in the long run is gonna cost you tons and tons of money. All right guys, so if you've gone onto icepod.com, you've probably looked at their chillers. And if you look at this chiller right here, you'll probably notice something that they look very, very similar to each other. And that's because they're nearly identical. And actually the internals are the exact same. And so the thing about this one is this actually is what's called an aquarium chiller. And these will run anywhere from about $250 to just under $400. And you can pick these up on eBay, on Amazon and a number of other places. And the only difference again is that the other ones are called a cold plunge chiller and this is an aquarium chiller. So by using this, we're gonna save a ton of money. So this particular chiller right here is a one third horsepower chiller. It will be enough for the ice pod that we have. It comes with just a few accessories. We have the little attachment up here for the hoses that go into the chiller itself up here. It comes with this cheap little uh, pump right here some hosing and just a miscellaneous cords and, and some other things right there. But it's pretty basic. And I'll tell you guys right up front that if you wanted to do this DIY with just this right here, it is possible, but it's really not the best way. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. It's the best way to get everything hooked up. For this DIY, let me go over the parts list. Obviously, we're gonna start with the chiller. I'm gonna use an Active Aqua, the 400. I'm gonna use a sediment filter. Now this is a half inch, it's a little bit smaller one that you can obviously get bigger ones but I'm gonna use this little one. And then we're gonna get these little barb attachments right here. I'm gonna use these two angled ones right here. This is three quarter inch to three quarter inch here. And then this is actually half inch to three quarter inch right there. And we're gonna use three quarter inch hose because uh, that's gonna allow for a little bit more flow. Now, if you've done any research on the topic of building your own water chill, you've probably seen uh, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch hosing. And you're probably wondering which one you should use. I really, personally, I think three quarter inch is perfect for almost every single application out there. Uh, I had mentioned that the hosing that comes with the, the aquarium chiller, uh, you could use that. The problem with that, if you look at the hose, it's actually, it's really thin. So you don't get a whole lot of water flowing through there. And that's compared to the three quarter inch right here. It's just way more water. And so that's just gonna increase the cooling capacity overall. So let's talk about how we're gonna put everything together. Starting with the active aqua pump. Again, I got the 400. This is uh, about 400 gallons per hour. You can get larger sizes and and that's okay. But for this one, we're gonna go ahead and use this one because I think it's plenty for our application. It's relatively inexpensive. When you get this pump, as you can see, this part pops right off and this is just like a pre-filter and this part screws off as well. And so what we're actually going to do for this application is we're gonna use the include, included barbs right here. There's two of these barbs just like that. And they also have two little rubber grommets right here. And so all you have to do is put these rubber grommets on here um, and then just screw them in to right there. And this is the finished product right there. They're just screwed in nice and snug and tight. These pieces right here, you can hold on to if you like, but I'm probably never gonna use them again. I'll probably just end up throwing those away. After that, what we're gonna do is, we're, I'm gonna take you over to the ice pot here in a second, but we're gonna take a sediment filter and this is gonna collect any of the large things like grass, uh, larger dirt, uh, anything like that, bugs. And this is gonna screw right into the drainage valve. And what I'm gonna do is take this little barb right here. This is half inch to three quarter inch right there. I really like these uh, barbs right here. You can get these at Lowe's in the plumbing section. 
I would look for them because they're very inexpensive. These run anywhere from like 60 cents to like a dollar for all these pieces. Otherwise, it's, they're gonna cost you a lot more than that. Uh, I've paid like six, seven dollars for some of these things uh, for other applications. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is screw this right into here. And then we're gonna take this over to the ice pod and we're going to screw that into the drainage valve. Now just a quick reminder, this is a DIY. There's lots of different ways that you can do this. And so I'm gonna attach my sediment filter directly to that drainage valve right there. And if you take a look at this arrow right there, that's the way that the water goes. So you just wanna be conscious of that. And I have a little bit of plumber's tape on there, just a little bit. And we're gonna screw this in. Let's get it nice and snug like that. And so anytime that you want to drain, the, take out the grass, anything like that, you just unscrew this little piece right there. And that's all you have to do. And I have the barb right here. We're gonna attach the hose into here and that hose is gonna go into the chiller. So let's go ahead and skip to that step. All right, y'all, for this next step, we're actually gonna uh, go ahead and cut the hoses to size. Now, here's a few things you have to consider. You have to consider the placement of your ice pod and where your chiller is gonna be at. Now, I recommend having the chiller either raised up on a little platform, like up off the ground, or at least have it a few feet away from the ice pod. And also you wanna give it enough room to breathe. So you wanna have it away from the wall, any other obstructions, make sure that all that hot air from the chiller can actually vent out. What I'm gonna do is taking all those things into consideration, I'm gonna cut these uh, according to the size that I need. Having said that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hose, it's gonna go to that barb that we put onto the drainage valve with the sediment filter. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna go into the pump right here, okay? So that hose will go into here, and then this right here will go up into one side of the chiller. And once it goes through the chiller, it comes out the other side, and the other side will go back into the ice pod, and that will be the cold water. Now there is one thing I failed to mention on the parts list. Getting some hose clamps just like that will definitely be a really good idea to keep everything, all the hoses attached. The other thing is, is when you're putting the hose onto the barb just like that, here's a little tip. Get water, boil it for about two minutes, get it nice and hot, and then all you do is you stick the tip of the hose in the water for about 20 seconds. That'll get it nice and pliable and it'll go on here, no problem. And this is the final product. So we have our drainage right there with the sediment filter. It's attached to a barb. And that barb has the three quarter inch hose attached to it that goes straight to the pump. The pump has a small hose that comes up here, goes in one side of the chiller and then exits that other side of the chiller, has a longer hose, which turns the cold water into the ice pod. Now, a quick word on the chiller, that this is bi-directional, so it doesn't matter which way you attach those hoses. It just has to go in one way and go out the other. Another quick word, it's really a good idea to have this all plugged into a GFCI outlet, just in case there's any kind of shorts in electricity, it will just shut off immediately. Now, the only thing I don't like about this setup is the fact that we have the water return line going over the top like that, and unfortunately, in this case, we have to do that. Now, ice pod, just be aware, they do actually have an ice pod that has two of these spigots right there, one down below and one up top, and it's made specifically for their chiller. So if you can get that one, pay a little bit extra, I would definitely recommend getting that. However, for now, this absolutely works. There's no problem with the hose going over the top like that. Before turning on the chiller, one thing I do recommend is go, on, go ahead and turn on the pump first. Let all the water cycle through the whole system. Check for leaks. Make sure there's no leaks, have it run just for a few minutes. Before you do that, uh, before you turn on the pump, make sure that you actually open up the valve right there and let the water flow through, then turn on the power. And then after it's been running for a couple of minutes, then we'll turn on the chiller. Just turn on the pump. As you can see, the water is flowing through the entire system. Pull this out really quick. Yeah, that's a nice flow of water. That's a good amount of water that's flowing back. And if you can hear it all, the pump is very, very quiet. It doesn't make a whole lot of noise at all. I've let it run for a couple minutes. The only place that I saw a small leak was with the strainer. I didn't have it on there tight enough. Everything else looks really good. Now, what I'm gonna do is this, this chiller in particular comes with this little small basic remote. I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Turn this thing on. Right now, it's reading that the water is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and set the temperature. We're not gonna go that low. I'm gonna set it to, we'll just say 50 for right now. There is a one minute delay on this particular chiller, so it'll turn on here in 60 seconds. But what it does is it starts at this temperature and as soon as it reaches, actually, yeah, there it goes, it, it turned on already. And so what it'll do is it'll just keep going until it reaches your desired temperature and then it'll shut off. And anytime that it goes about two degrees above that, it'll turn back on. 
keep in mind that so the chiller it won't always be on but what will always be on unless you turn it off will be the pump that'll be constantly running and i think that's a good idea because it just makes it so that there's no standing water or anything like that and it's constantly kind of filtering through now i apologize if you hear the chiller in the background so i'm going to just keep that running now a one-third horsepower chiller depending on the starting temperature uh, it will definitely take a few hours to get cold. If it's uh, really, really warm water coming out of the hose, like 80 degrees, say in the middle of summer, it could take anywhere from about 10 to 12 hours to cool all that water. It's a lot of water and it's really trying to drop the temperature quite a bit depending on where you have it set at. Now, one question you might have at home is how do you keep this thing clean? Because I will tell you that the ice pods, if you're hopping in it every single day, within a week, it's gonna be disgusting. No doubt about it. And you know, having to sit there and refill about 50 to 60 gallons of water every single week, that's a lot of waste. But there is a way that you can keep everything clean. And these are the three products I highly recommend. And the first one is gonna be the sanitizer. You know, just follow the directions on here. You don't put a whole lot in here. Now this bottle will run you about $30 or so. It's a very small bottle and you're probably thinking that's a lot of money, but the thing is it only takes a very, very, very small amount of this stuff. And I've, ha I've been using this for the last year and it's still about three fourths away full. So you don't have to use a whole lot of this. So this is the Serona sanitizer. And then to keep all of the like body oils and things like that to help dissolve it, there's a natural uh, clear enzyme dissolver. Go ahead and, and again, follow the instructions. You don't have to put a whole lot of this in there. And this will help uh, make sure that it takes care of all the oils from your body and your hair and whatnot. And then the last thing that I recommend is getting a food grade hydrogen peroxide. Now this is 3%. I probably, next time I got this, I'd probably go with a 7%, just a little bit stronger. Initially, when I first fill it up, I'll do about a half a cup of this to the water. And then every time that I use it, I'll just do like a cap full of that. And this will help, again, just keep everything sanitary and clean. Because if you use these products, I've gone up to well over two months of using the ice pod in the past, and I haven't had to clean the water. That's something to kind of keep in mind. A lot of people think it's up to the filter. And this filter that we have, that's just filtering out grass and dirt and things like that. So this is how you're gonna keep it clean. And this is a really good investment. Because again, these products, they go a really long ways, even though they might initially be a little bit more expensive. This is just one more look at the setup that I have here in my garage. Now, as you'll notice, the sun is kind of beating down on the chiller. You want to avoid any extra heat as much as possible. So I'm actually going to close the door here in just a little bit. Keep the chiller, keep it away from the wall, give it plenty of air. And if you do that, it'll work way more efficient and it'll cool the water a lot faster than it would otherwise. So there you have it. That is the DIY, how to hook up a water chiller to an ice pod. This DIY, it's very, very simple and it's gonna save you a ton of money. With the ice pod, the water chiller, the, the sediment filters, the hoses and everything included, it should run you right around $500, maybe a little bit more, uh, hopefully a little bit less. It's incredibly simple to do. There's no reason why you shouldn't do it because this setup, as I mentioned in the very beginning, is the same exact chiller that you're gonna get from IcePod. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, go ahead and leave those questions, comments below. I ask that you like and subscribe. I try to make these videos informative for you. I hope you guys have an incredible day. Thank you for watching.